Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard and today I'm going to be showing you my updated standard Royal Paladin deck. Yay! So uh, this is updated with all the new support from Yaji Academy. So I hope you guys enjoy this deck profile. So your starter is of course Glime, the shiny boy. So Glime's skill is when you write on top of it, you draw a card. Yep, this is standard. So, um... Three copies of the new guy. So we're only running three. Monarch Sanctuary Alfred. So Monarch Sanctuary Alfred's skill is all of your blaster blades on your rear guard and guard circle gain 10k power and 5k shield. So that's pretty cool. You know, the continuous 10k is a blaster blade. Uh, nice addition to standard, you know, high power. The uh, shield is also nice. Defensiveness on a force clan, pretty cool. The other skill is when it's placed, you cannot blast one, soul blast one. You return a blaster blade from your drop zone to your hand. So that counts the soul blast. So if you soul blast blaster blade, you can add it to your hand since you do the cost first. And then this unit gains 15k. So if you don't add blaster blade, you still get the 15k. And then, and then afterwards, if you have an Alfred card in your soul, this gets a crit. So counting itself or whatever other Alfred you're running in your deck. So this card is really cool. Uh, it's kind of like all the new Crossride stuff, basically, kind of that we're getting, like Gus Blaster and Zangeki and stuff. So, yeah, I like it. So, I'm only running it at three just because I want to run uh, four copies of King of Knights, Alfred. So, I just wanted to be able to see this first before I went into Monarch uh, Sanctuary, Alfred. So, that is my reason for that. Plus, I like... Um, King of Knights Alfred, how it thins out the deck. So King of Knights Alfred's skill is act once per turn. You counter blast one, search your deck for up to one card named Blaster Blade, and it gets 5k, and then you shuffle your deck. And then continuous during your turn, if you have Blaster Blade on rear, this gets 10k. So really good card. This is your ideal first ride for the for the, the game. Ride this, search out Blaster Blade. You know, you're thinning out triggers. You already got Blaster Blade out. And then it gets power itself. It's like giving itself a force marker for free if you call a blaster blade. So I want to run four copies of this and then the goal is to after your blaster blade dies you can just ride Monarch Sanctuary Alfred on top, call that get the blaster blade back from your drop into your hand and you work from there. Uh, lastly, uh, running two copies of Exculpate the Blaster. So Exculpate is basically your finisher for the deck. Uh, as a friend of mine said uh, from playing this deck, most of his wins are kind of come from Exculpate, which is why I'm kind of considering upping it to maybe three copies. So Exculpate's skill is when it's placed, you count plus one, you choose one card from your soul and put everything else into your drop zone. Uh, and then when this attacks, you attack your opponent's entire board, so their rear guards and their vanguard at the same time. So that's pretty cool. The other skill is at the end of the battle that it attacked, you put two cards in your hand to the soul. Retire this unit. Yes, I know. I, I forget to do that in some videos. I put in the soul. You retire this unit, so you put in the drop, and then from your you ride a blaster blade from your soul as stand. If you could not ride a blaster blade, you automatically lose. It says right there, you lose. So you have to ride blaster blade. But we have cards like Monarch Sanctuary Alfred to get those blaster blades right back into your hand from the drop zone. So you can hold on to that blaster blade until you go into Exculpate, and then you go into your Exculpate and you can win that turn. Um, that's why I'm considering up in this to three, and maybe dropping um, Alfred down to down to three. So, but we'll see. I'm still I'm still playing around with the deck, and I like it at two for now. So yeah, Exculpate, really good card. All right, now to talk about the guy himself, which is Blaster Blade, the person this whole deck revolves around. So Blaster Blade's skill is if you have four or more rear guards, this gets a crit. That's when it's on Van Circle. So that's really good because we have a lot of, uh, we have cards that allow you to fill up your board quick during the early game if you have access to them. And you can get that crit when you turn to ride and pressure your opponent with more damage. The other skill is when it's placed, you counter blast one, soul blast one. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and retire it. So the soul we're not too worried about anymore since we're not running Soul Saver Dragon. So you can use that skill, but the counterblast is still like a little needed. 
So you're probably not going to end up using Blaster Blade skill because you would rather use it on way other cards in this deck. So, for Blaster Blade for the name. Alright, next is new card, Knight of Loyalty Bedivere. So, running four copies of Bedivere, Bedivere's skill is when it's placed from your hand, you may call a Knight of Friendship K from your hand to the rear guard circle. And if you do, you draw a card. So, it's like a net zero instead of calling a card from your hand minus one technically. So, it's, it's basically a plus. Um... And then the other skill is during the battle that's boosted by K, it gets 3K. So, and then K's skill, of course, making it, a, giving it plus 6, so the column's going to swing for 24 by itself, which is really big, considering that it's not counting a force marker on itself. So, really good at combo. Uh, it's kind of like Akane. It, well, K is basically like Akane, except the numbers are bigger. So that's why I prefer K and Bedivere. So definitely want to be running these. Lastly, for grade 2s, instead of running Akane, which some builds do, I am running uh, Sage of Arch Jarn. So Jarn skills when it attacks the Vanguard, if you have three more regrets, gets 5k. So very generic, but I'm deciding to run this just because it is a card that doesn't have cost for its skill, that such as Soul or Counterblast. So I like the simple 5k, put it from an 8k booster, it swings for 23, uh, you put a Force Marker, it's 33. So big numbers, basically free since your board's almost constantly full. And Akane costs a Counterblast, which you probably want to use for other cards. So I'd rather um, not have like a dead card in my hand for the most part. So uh, that's why I really like Jarn. So next is Grade Ones. So because we're running Bedivere, we are running four copies of Knight of Friendship K. So K's skill is when it's placed from hand, you Counterblast 1, search your deck for up to one Knight of Loyalty Bedivere and call it to rear and shuffle your deck. And then during the battle of Boost Bedivere, this uh, this unit gets 3k. So, you the fact that you can ride turn to like, you could ride grade 1, and then call this afterwards, if you have Counter Blast for whatever reason, and you can call out a grade 2 right away. So that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, you're going to basically just ride Blaster Blade, call K, call out Bedivere, if you have another K in your hand, you can use Bedivere's skill to call that K, draw a card, and use that K to call it another Bedivere. It's for two counter blasts, basically. So these cards are really good. I mean, you have to call... No, I'm kidding. You have to call Bedivere from hand. I think that's what the card says. Yeah, reading is hard. Anyways, uh, yeah, the idea is basically you're going to be using K to call out Bedivere, and very rarely you're going to be using... Uh, the better of your skill for the most part. So yeah, really good card. Please run four of this. Next up, uh, four copies of Alan. So the deck is very counter blast heavy, but it, the option is there. It's when this is placed, you counter blast one, you call it the one card with grade less than or equal to your vanguard, to your hand. If you do draw a card, it gets 3k. So you add power, uh, you get to draw a card. So it's like situational stuff. If you really need rear guards, and you have Counter Blast to spare, uh, I like to run the card. Uh, it's Guard Fodder, it's an 8k booster, uh, and then Standard is also more about like consistency versus like combos, especially with this deck. So this is a very consistency-focused deck, so you want to run cards that kind of maintain that consistency. And just like Marin, uh, sorry, just like Alan, I'm running Marin, so it's basically kind of like the same card. So Marin's skill is when your rear guard is placed in the same column as this, you counter blast one, draw a card, this gets 3k. So yes, there are a lot of counter blasts in this deck. Uh, I was thinking about running Sword of Hope Richard um, in the deck, taking out maybe Alan for the most part, maybe Marin depending, and just to have more cards that require less counter blasts and kind of just have a more aggressiveness or defensiveness to them. Uh, I'm still testing out the deck for now, but basically, um, since it's like basically running four Allens for the most part, uh, you don't always have to use this skill. It can just be an 8k booster, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I like the consistency, but I'm not planning on using every single counter blast from every card in this deck. So for the most part, it's basically just running eight copies of Allen. So that was it for grade ones. Uh, triggers... I really don't think there's any other lineup for this. Maybe if you maybe if you run more draws and crits, but I doubt it. So it's just four of the draw PG. So flash shield, Esalt. 
So it's when it's placed on guard circle, you discard a card, you know, your unit cannot be hit for the battle. It's a draw trigger too, so, you know, everyone's going to be running play sets of these. I'm running eight critical triggers, so we got four of Bringer of Bringer of Good Luck Epona, and then four copies of Flogel. Um, uh, crits are nice. Crits help win games. Monarch Sanctuary often gains a crit, so if you get a crit on top of that, it could help, you know, push the game. Uh, you know, so run crits, and also it has more shield, so drawing into them is nice. Last but not least, your four heal triggers. So yeah, healing is cool, guys, and it has a 20k shield. So that's why we run heal triggers. All right, and then just just because running your force markers. Don't forget your force markers, kids. So that was it for the deck. Very simple. The deck's really. Um, I would. I don't know. I wouldn't say the deck is fun because standard is a very kind of like stale pace in my opinion. It's kind of just. You play your cards, and then you call three stuff, and you get your drive checks, and then you're done. So it's kind of like, eh, whatever. Uh, Monarch Sanctuary Offered just helps with consistency. K and Bedivere are better Akane and Pongol, since you don't need Soul for Soul Saver in this deck. And that's pretty much it. I don't run Soul... You could... If you want to run a Soul Saver variant, I'd recommend making room for Pongol and Akane. Maybe you could... Uh, you can low you can lower the monarch Alfred count, make Jaren into Akane's and make your Marins into Pongols, and then you can run Soul Saver. So go about how you want to build this deck. But that was my deck, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. And that's basically it. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all next time.